Today's goal is to do two things. Uh, first, give you a bit of an understanding about kind of transistor level uh, optimizations that ACT can do, and then also uh, give you a sense of ACT's templating language. Uh, it's a pretty standard template language, so uh, it should be pretty easy to, to pick up. And then also to give you kind of a, a high level sense of the way uh, these kind of tokens flow through the systems, the, the tokens on channels flow through the system. So to start, let's take a look at kind of a, uh, a arithmetic operator, the, the adder, right? And the adder is pretty big. We've got, it looks a lot like uh, the AND unit that we developed uh, a couple of lectures ago, except that it's far more involved, right? So this is a PCHB reshuffling. We receive uh, on A, B, and carry in, and then we send the three-way XOR on the sum bit, and then we send the uh, majority operator on the carry out. And so because the carry out is a majority operator, we can get early out for the cases where A and B are both one or both zero, right? Either we can say, if they're both one, we know the carry out is one. If they're both zero, we know the carry out is zero. Uh, so you can see here are the four drivers. Uh, following the PCHB reshuffling, we have the enable signal, which gates everything. Then we have these pretty massive delay and sensitive um, uh, logic chains, right? So uh, we check false, 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 true, 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 false, true, 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 false, right? And so that's basically saying, are there zero or two inputs high? Uh, and that tells us whether or not the sum bit is zero. This for uh, S.T, uh, it's either one or three are high, All right? So that's the three-way XOR. For the carryout, uh, if we look at the true rail, then it would be any two. So A dot T or B dot T or A dot T and B dot T, A dot T and C I dot T or B dot T and C I dot T, right? Um, and so notice that this doesn't uh, check validity of all three inputs. It only checks validity of two. It leaves the validity check to the PCHB of the side of the reshuffling, which is down here. Uh, and that's using the same strategy that we use in the AND unit. So carry out gives an early out. Then we uh, compute validity for A, B, and carry in, and then we compute validity for the, up, the two output uh, channels, S and CO, and that gets uh, stuck into uh, RV. All of those validity signals uh, are used to drive a C element on FE, which is a shared node uh, split between, you know, forked between A.E, B.E, CI.E, um, basically all the all three inputs. Then all the enable signals are C elemented together uh, to generate the uh, internal enable signal used for the PCHB reshuffling. Now the PCHB reshuffling here really helps us with the uh, stack length for the reset phase uh, because all we have to do is use the uh, downgoing transition on enable to gate our reset phase. And then the rest is fairly symmetric, right? We we compute neutrality on all the inputs, we compute neutrality on the outputs, and then we see element both FE and enable. So the thing that we want to tackle, the, the thing that's that's still problematic about this handshake, about this productional set, is this giant block of transistors up here in the forward requests. Right? We want to do something about that. And that's where shared transistor networks come in. And so effectively, we're going to take all of these things for S.F and S.T, and we're going to mash them all together into one expression. Now, uh, in doing so, you lose the ability to represent the expression um, with kind of proper nesting that you would expect out of Boolean, you know, kind of written Boolean logic. And so you kind of have to create a graph. Uh, and 
ACT has support for that. So the gate we're going to be creating is this thing. And so effectively, we're going to be sharing the enable signal. Uh, we're going to then share A.F and A.T, those two transistors, and then uh, B.F, B.T, CI.F, and CI.T. So we can trace a couple of paths through this to kind of see how it's working. Uh, let's check S.T. So S.T has enable, A.T, B.F, C.F. Right, so that's one is high. Uh, enable AT, uh, BT, CT, that's three are high. Uh, enable AF, BT, CF, that's one is high. Right, enable AF, uh, BF, CIT. That's one is high. And so all of the other paths that you see here go through uh, effectively illegal states of the encoding. So let's take a look at that. If we go through AT and then uh, let's see, BT and then uh, actually, those aren't listed here. There are no there are no uh, paths through through uh, two rails at once. Luckily, unless we start doing loops, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we represent this in ACT? Let's start with our enable signal. We're going to pull it out of these two uh, production rules, and we're going to represent it as its own node. So we're going to take this node right here, and we're going to give it a name. And it's going to be a special name called at SEN. So we're going to say enable uh, drives at SEN down. And the at sign just says that this is a shared gate network node. It's not a normal node. Um, so basically, don't don't check things like instability on it uh, or interference. But then we can use uh, our knowledge of its uh, of its value when driven to uh, connect it up to the rest of the gate. So let's do this a couple more times. Let's do this for A. So for A, we have AF, AF here, AT, AT here, AT, AF, AF, AT. Right? So we're going to take these and create two shared nodes, min A and majority A. Okay? So min A is AF, majority A is AT. So AF and BF and CIF, S that up, up. Right? And so what we've done is we've just created, so uh, min A is this node right here, majority A is this node right here. We, keep, we can keep doing this, right? So we do it for B. Uh, we pull min B and majority B out. Right? And then we can do it for uh, C. Now, C doesn't need an extra uh, set of internal nodes because those nodes are just uh, the internal nodes for the C element, right? Basically, we're done at this point. So we can do the same thing for CO, the carry out, right? So the carry out looks a little bit different. We share the enable, we share AT and AF, and then we have this weird, like, uh, horizontal, uh, H pattern, right? And this time there are paths through illegal states here, right? So if we do enable and AT and BF and BT and BF, right? BF and BT will never be high at the same time, guaranteed by our mutual exclusion property. Um, and so let's show what that looks like on the production rules here. We have enable drive the uh, CEN down. Uh, then we create min A, uh, majority A. Actually, we need to rename these nodes to be different um, so that they don't conflict with above. And then we have uh, mid, which is this node right here. And then finally, that all goes out to CO. 
So right now there's a bug in this uh, that I missed, which is min A and majority A need to be uh, deconflicted here. We need to rename. So there's like two questions. Uh, the first one is that enable transistor seems like it needs to be larger. So is that something that ACT will take into account if it sees like the, the special node drives two different things, will make the transistor wider or whatever? Is that something we have to specify? That's something you have to specify. Um, but also, the enable transistor doesn't actually have to be larger uh, because the down the pull down for this side and the pull down for this side are mutually exclusive. So only one is ever being driven at a time. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, maybe I, okay. Maybe I was thinking SEN and CEN were the same thing. Okay, never mind. SEN and CEN are different. And there's a reason for separating these out. Uh, and that is actually sneak paths. So because we're sharing the gate here, uh, if your transistors, uh, if there isn't a guarantee of mutual exclusivity, then you can create a sneak path from one side to the other, causing them to kind of interfere and drive each other, which is problematic. And so neither of these gates have a sneak path because these are all, this is an illegal state, right? CI.F and CI.T. Um, but this is the primary assumption that you have to keep in mind when building these gates is that you don't create a sneak path. You have to verify this gate against your state space. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, and then the second question is, is how how would you go about building this up? Just basically like looking at what is the same in functions and then putting them together, or is this more of an art? Uh, I mean, all of this so far is in art, right? <laughs> uh, all, all the stuff that I've taught you, unfortunately, at the moment, is in art. Um, this. In particular, you can start from the source and just work your way down. If, if the source looks the same to gates, check to make sure that the following transistors uh, implement a mutually exclusive pair of states and you are safe to share them. All right, so template. So templating in ACT looks pretty much identical to templating in C, uh, except that loops and uh, conditionals uh, look more like CHP. So if we have our uh, ripple carry adder defined here, we this is a, a four bit ripple carry with uh, E102, we have an array of four E102s for A, an array of four E102s for B, we have our carry in, we have our output on S, and we have our carry out. Then we have three channels inside this, which are the, the carries, right? That, that's the carry chain, C0, C1, and C2. And so this hooks everything up without a template, right? This is just kind of raw, uh, place a, a process here, hook it up. So if we want to add template in there, a couple of, couple of ways we can do that to this process. Uh, the first way is that we first define the template, right? What we're templating on, which is the number of bits in this ripple carry. So uh, p int is a type exclusively used for parameters. Uh, it is and templating, right? It is not a valid type that can be used in professional set. So then, instead of Four here, we have N, N, and N. Instead of three uh, internal carry channels, we have N minus one, right? So if N is four, N minus one would be three. Instead of four add bits, we have N. And then for the first one, we give it A zero, B zero, the carry in. Uh, S, uh, this should be, one or S zero, I mucked that up again. So S zero and C zero. For all the internal bits, we get bit 
i, so bit, uh, this should be bit i plus one. Wow, I'm really missing a bunch of stuff here. i plus one, s zero. All right. So we get bit i plus one, a i, b i, c i, s i, uh, C I plus one. And then the last one we get the N minus minus one bit. Uh, we get uh, A N minus one, B N minus one. So these are all, all the last bits up here uh, with C N minus two, which is here and the carry out. Um, how does that uh, generate loop work? So I don't understand the syntax for that. Right. So the loop is uh, basically starts with the parentheses, and then you have the iterator i colon the number of iterations colon, and then the thing that you want. So it just spits out a bunch. It just copies that and then replaces i. It's a really uh, basic loop, basically. Okay. So it auto starts at zero, and then it goes until it is a basically is just a normal less than four loop, except it always starts at zero. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So yeah. then shouldn't that be n minus one instead of n there? Yep. Okay. All right. So, uh, so that's the first round, right, of things we can do. We can simplify a bit though. And so instead of having individual uh, first and last, we can have a condition. So if i is 0, then we do this. If i is n minus 1, we do this. Otherwise, we do this. OK? And uh, we have a, a, i, b, i, and then c, i, s, and c, a, b, the internal node, internal channel C, S, and CO, right? And then what you'd expect for uh, the uh, internal internal add units. And so the rest is all the same, except for uh, that we move the first and last into this loop. But the simplest thing that we can do is alias. And so we defined instead of n minus one, we'd find n plus one channels. Uh, so that covers all of these carries. We alias the first one with carry in. We alias the last one with carry out. And then we just have our normal loop where we don't have any special cases. The appendix slides in this go through the full derivation of the uh, one bit adder. We won't be getting into that during lecture. But if we go back to the very beginning, uh, we're going to get into some examples. So I'm just going to take this process definition, copy it, and open up the examples real quick. So in, in our examples, we have two. Um, E1 is just the instantiations of the sources, the sinks, and the add bit. So it's a test on the add bit. The add bit comes from add.act. And so we have a process definition here for uh, PCHB one bit add. We're just gonna paste in the thing that we copied. So this is where we are before the transistor networks. And if we, we still need to share FE, Right, so let's go back up here and uh, FE and B equals FE and CIE equals FE. All right, uh, we need to replace the false rails with P0. We need to replace the true rails with B1. P, B, one, and then we need to define a couple of nodes. So we have 
enable and FE. We have underscore enable and underscore FE. And then we have underscore AV, underscore BV, underscore CIV, underscore RV. And that covers the valids. Then we have C1 of two, underscore S, and underscore CO. And that covers the forward drivers. Okay. Let's add our inverters. So this would be underscore S dot D zero down, uh, underscore S dot D one down. CO is underscored. All right. And then we need underscore S dot D zero, S dot D zero up. One, one, CO, and CO one. Okay, so that covers those inverters. We need the inverters for FE. So this would be underscore FE up, uh, FE down, and then for enable. Okay. Uh, then we need the inverters for this. CO and CO zero. And finally, the inverters down here. So underscore FE down, underscore FE drives FE up, underscore enable down drives enable up. Okay. Uh, let's do reset real quick. So we need to reset enable to be uh, low. So not g dot underscore s reset or to force this rule and then to block this rule we need g dot underscore s reset and uh, then we need to drive fe so we need to drive that high so that we don't make any assumptions on the inputs so we need to block this rule uh, which would be not g dot underscore s not g dot s reset and and then down here we would have uh, not or we'd have g dot s reset four. Now we know that underscore r v is going to be high because we've reset our output rails neutral, right? So that will block this rule, uh, which means that we can get rid of this and make this a, a P reset down here. We don't have any information about AV, BV, or CIV. Uh, and so the information we have about RV isn't enough to know that this rule is going to be forced high or forced low. All right. So that's our standard PCHV reset techniques. And now we're working on this mess. Uh, let's start with enable. So we need to create the internal node uh, SEN. So it'd be enable uh, drives S at SEN down. And then not at SEN, not at SEN. So that's the first share. Okay. You uh, have to declare that outside of your PRS, or does it figure it out? It figures it out. It's not a normal node. You can't you can't use it in as like a gate to anything. It's just a, a shared gate node. All right. So let's do a zero and a one. So uh, not at S E N and a dot D zero. We're just going to call this 
a uh, underscore a zero down, not at SEN at uh, and a dot b one underscore a one down. So let's actually call this, I don't know, uh, SA so that we disambiguate between the two. And this would be at. Okay. Now we need to figure out how that plays into our gates here. So we have A0 here and A0 here. Uh, we can take these both out here and here. And instead of SEN, it'll be SA0 and these two. And then, or not at SA1 and, so we have A1 here, which we're going to remove. And we have A1 here, which we're going to remove. Okay. So our gate's a little simpler so far. Now let's take a look at this one. We have AD1 here, and we have AD1 over here, and we have AD0 over here. They crisscross, right? And AD0 over here. So let's do AD0 first, so it's not SA0. And we're going to take this and move it out of the way. Just going to move it over here real quick. And there we go. We're going to keep these together, and then we can remove A0 from here and A0 from here. OK. Then we need not at SA1. And we have A1 here which we can remove, and A1 here, which we can remove. So the next thing is uh, B, right? So let's do uh, not at SA0 and B dot B0, right? So this be at SB0 down, not at SA0. Uh, uh, let's do zero and b dot d one at s b one down. Now we still need s a one stuff here. Uh, let's take a look at this a bit. We have s a zero b zero, and then and we have s a zero b one. We have SA1, B0, and SA1, B1. Uh, there's a bit of a trick here. Let's see. If we look here, we share CI0, CI0, right? So we have SA0, B0, CI0. SA1, B1, CI0. And so we can actually take, uh, so this one, not SA0 and B0, and then we take this one, not at SA1 and B0, or sorry, B.D1, and we get this other signal. Let's just call that zero, uh, and we get, so instead of SA0 here, it would be SB0, get rid of B0. And then this disappears. Right, and so we've still got not at SA0 and here at the moment. Let's do the other side. 
So we have uh, let's move these side by side here. We have for the two nodes that share ci.v1, we have SA0 and V1. And then we have SA1 and B.D0. Right? It's an it's an XOR. And that gives us SB1. So let's give SB1 here, get rid of B1, get rid of this. And ta-da. And that works because of the exclusive the um, exclusiveness, right? Yeah. Okay. Because ci.p0 and ci.p1 are mutually exclusive states. Okay. Uh, and notice we positioned this. We know that the carry in as a as a signal with timing comes in last. Right, and so it's closest to our uh, output node in this whole gate. Okay, uh, can we do the same thing here? So we have uh, SA0 BD1, SA1 BD0. So that would be SA0 BD1, SA1 BD0. So the two first ones are, are not at SP1, and ci.d0. So not at sv1 and ci.d0. And that gets rid of this and this. The other two are not at sv0 and ci.d1. Because we have SA, not SA0 and B0, SA0, B0, SA1, B1, SA1, B1. And so we can get rid of this and this. And there we go. There's our shared gate network. OK, so enable. That drives at CEN down. So that gives us not at C, if I can type CEN, not at CEN. Step one. Uh, step two is B, I believe, um, because we have. Okay, so our majority gate, we can expand this out a bit and see what see what's going on. So it'd be A D0 and B D0 or A D0 and C I D0 or right, it's it's any two. So this would be A dot D1. And okay. Um, so I think we can just take either uh, either A or B and start with that. So let's do that. Let's start with A. Uh, not at C E N and A dot D zero at C A zero down. And let's do that for one. So now we know that this is uh, not at C A zero and, and that gets rid of A zero. And this is not at, uh, and that gets rid of A zero here, which we can put an or around that. But we still have not at C E N and those two. Okay. That's a start. 
Uh, let's try 81, I believe. So this would be um, not at CA1. Uh, and then this would be get rid of that, get rid of this. And this would be not at CN. Okay. So the next thing to note would be that uh, we have B0 here and B0 and CI.B0 here. Um, if we if we share CA0 and CA1, so it would be something like uh, not at CA0 uh, let's see. I have to look at the slides. Uh, so they they do the two majority first, the the two uh, early outs. Let's do that. So we have uh, and. Uh, so this would be and b to b0 here and b dot b1 here. Uh, so these are the two here and here that are early out. And we have not at ca0 and not at ca1. So now we have to do something with these. Uh, and I believe they do. So here's that internal node. And they share, they create like a mid. And it's going to be not at CA zero and B dot T or not at CA one and B dot F. Right, so that's here driven by these two. Uh, and then this is there's the CA zero uh, and B one or not at mid and CI dot. So for mid we have B zero. Uh, mid is just one is high, so we need. Too, for too high to be one or less than too high to be zero. So this would be CI dot D zero. And then here would be not at mid and CI dot D one. All right, how do we do? Um, zero goes into CI zero, so zero, one, and then zero is only one high, so that goes low. Zero, one, one is two high, so that goes high. Uh, one, zero, zero is one high. One, zero, one is too high, so that goes up. And then let's work through these. So uh, 
zero, and then zero. That goes, and then we have one, one, and that goes. So the derivation of the mid here really is just like staring at the problem for a long time. Like if you're going to do it from scratch, stare at the problem for a long time. So we have this. Let's run it and make sure that it doesn't explode. Uh, let's all right. I'm add dot act line twenty two. Uh, semicolons. Cool. Uh, not CMOS implementable variable underscore SD zero. Down. There we go. RV. Uh, so RV needs to be. Ah, I goofed. Oh no, this needs to be a C element. So let's create RV. The internal node of the C element. And this will be RV up and then RV, RV down. And then we need to do the same thing down here. So this would be RV down, not RV underscore RV up. Oh, All right, there we go. Cool. All right. Let's here sim E1 to PRS. Source E1.rc. And cycle. All right. Looks like we have some uh, a functioning circuit at the very least. Um, okay. So let's take a look at the digital simulation uh, and uh, let's give it uh, to GTK wave. So here's some E1 to PRS pipe. Come on, pipe t uh, e1.sim source e1.rc cycle. So that gives us our simulation, and then sim to vcd e1.rc or dot sim, and save that to e1.vcd, and we wait. GTK wave e1 dot vcd all right let's take a look at uh a1 actually let's do this in order so a0 a1 uh then b0 b1 c0 c1 uh s0 s1 c O zero C O one. Now keep in mind this is random timing. So A D one goes up first with B D zero and C I D zero. That will give us a one on the output of S and a zero on the output of C. All right, so let's take a look at E two. We need to create our templated ripple carry adder. There is a second parameter going into add ripple. Uh, what is that parameter for? Uh, so see up here where we have, we've templated the add bit and we've given yeah. it a templated input for the size that's then used to compute the size of different uh, length stacks of NMOS and PMOS. And so okay. that S, S and Z is just six. Is there a way to tell GTK wave that these are very wide buses? So that way I don't have like 30 or like 90 something signals on one uh, waveform. So, so GTK wave should have signals called S underscore D zero underscore two. And that combines the true and false rails together. I already see that that's working. I'm just saying, is there a way to 
pull like see all the 32 ones of those together yeah, instead of yeah gtk wave has a grouping mechanism um but uh because because those channels operate with different timings and they go into the neutral state at different times all you'll see from the grouping is x's like G gtk okay. wave is like, i don't know what the value on this bus is because the values don't ever show up at the same time okay so that makes it a little bit more difficult um in order to make that visible you have to tell gtk wave kind of about the the kind of token order i guess rather than the timing so we have we're going to generate our template we have p int the number of units and then the size uh and we can we can put those together uh in one expression i believe so let's do def proc add ripple and we're gonna have our globals g and then we're gonna have our input channel so e1 of two uh this is a different type so e1 of two a n b n c i s n and c o okay uh now let's do the aliasing method so e1 of two do the carries and we'll give it n plus one internal carry channels and then c zero is ci and c n is co uh then we can do a loop so from i to n we're going to instantiate add bit of a certain size give it globals give it ai give it bi give it c i s i and then c i plus one then we close off the loop so bits we'll give it bit i add bit sc bits n So let's try this again, make clean, make E2, uh, bit not found, let's take a look, E2.act, bits versus bit, it should just be bit. All right, uh, PRSIM E2.PRS, pipe T, E2.SIM, source E2.RZ, and okay, that'll give us a lot to work with. Sim to VCD, uh, e2.sim to e2.vcd. And it'll complain because I cut off that last thing here with the control C, but it still emits a correct output. So GDK wave e2.vcd. All right, let's do a search uh, for D zero underscore two we we'll take all the a's uh, we're actually going to ignore the input channels here we're just going to look at the output channels i want to show you s uh, so this would be s zero to s 31 okay and we'll zoom out Okay, so this is why your bus has problems when you try to combine them all. Uh, this is all the first add, and notice it's kind of all over the place. This is your second, and notice the second over here is way ahead of the second over here. And that's because a break in the carry chain, right? That's our early out. This is our third following here. And then it just starts to decompose, right? Like you can't quite tell where one begins and the other ends. 
because it's just token order at some point. Uh, we can turn off random timing. So if we do e2.rc, let's do 10 to 100 and see what happens. Let's sim to VCD, uh, e2 dot uh, sim to e2 dot r to e2 dot VCD. And then GDK wave. This is bounded now at least. Yeah, so right here you can see, here's an early out. Here's another early out. Right here we can see early out, right? Early out, early out, and these are distinct. And so on average, you can tell that our, that our adder is performing roughly log in. It's starting, to, it's starting to stripe, but the frequency doesn't change with that stripe in. And as we go further, it, it kind of stays more striped, right? It, it levels out. So that's the behavior of kind of a larger system. So with a larger system like this, will you always see this kind of striping or? Uh, it's dependent upon what the network looks like. Right, this is a linear network with a bunch of channels coming in in parallel. So, you know, every now every now and then there's a there's an early out, but largely the data dependency is linear from one to the next. And so that's why you get this this striation. Um, if you don't, if you have a more complicated system, you're going to have more complicated behaviors. I'm still just so used to dealing with clock signals. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, can I? Is it possible to think through this in that way? And the answer is kind of, but basically no. Yeah. Um, and what's even more frustrating is that what's the performance of this system? What speed is it operating at? There's a uh, steady state kind of cycle frequency um, for the whole system. Uh, there is individual frequencies for individual channels, but you know, the that's going to also be dependent on like conditional input and output. Uh, there's uh, like how long does it take to complete the task at hand, right? And so if you're going to do like a benchmark, that's what you do. Um, but in general, yeah, it's the operating frequency, the energy, all of the performance metrics that you're used to measuring is highly dependent on the input data. Uh, 